Hi, I'm George, and we'll be using Affinity Photo to remove this background and then replace it with this nice wooden background effect. Now, if you like this video, make sure you hit that like button. Don't forget to click on share and subscribe as well. And check out my channel for a bunch more Affinity Photo videos. All right, let's get to it. I'm doing this project here inside of Affinity Photo 2020 and we'll be starting this project with this photograph here and removing this background and then using this picture for our new background. Now you can download both of these. There's links for that on my download page. You'll find a link for that of course in the description. Alright, the first thing we want to do here is to make a duplicate of this layer. So over here, right hand side, here's your layers. If you're not seeing your layers, it's this Layers tab right there or go up here to view, come down to studio right there, and then you'll find layers right in here. There it is. Okay, so click on your layer, right click on the name, and then choose duplicate. And then there we go. You can now close that background. We'll come back to that in just a little bit. Now to make a nice clean selection out of this, I want to get as much separation between the background and the foreground as possible. And we can do that by adding an adjustment onto this and just kind of brightening up the figure and tweaking the values a bit to help separate out that background. It's kind of close right in here. That's what I'm worried about is this area right there where the background is very close to the foreground. Now for that, let's go ahead and go over here to Adjustment. There's your tab and the top in here says Levels. Click on that and that opens up the Levels Adjustment. Ignore the pictures over here. We're not doing that. You can click on the name and hide that if that's bothering you at all. Just, you know, sure hide those. What you want over here in levels is you want to adjust your black and white values to try to separate out that background. I'm going to make the black just a little bit stronger like that. And let's bring the gamma up here to the left. And notice I'm beginning to get some separation now up in here. Don't worry about the values in the figure. That actually does not matter at all. Just want nice and contrasty. And we can get that with a gamma adjustment in here. Let's see if the white does any good for us. Not really. Leave that one alone. You can also bring your contrast down a bit by pulling the black output level over just a little bit. And that's for us just kind of lightening that background up a little bit. Okay, that looks pretty good. So I have nice separation now, especially up in here. Good separation between the background and the foreground. We're only using this layer just to get a selection and a mask. We'll use that mask on our previous layer. Okay, let's go back here to our layers. And where it says background down here, we want to merge these two layers together. So hold the control key down, click on both layers, right click, and we'll be merging these. Notice it says merge visible. Right now the background is not visible, so it's not going to merge into that background. I'll just merge these two up here. Okay, merge visible. They're now just on one layer up here. I can now hide these two layers, and I have this one layer. This is now an easy place to work with making our selection. Okay, for that, go over here to your tools, left-hand side. This will normally be the rectangle tool right there. Click and hold, and down below at the bottom, you have freehand selection tool. Grab that one. It's kind of a lasso tool. And then just make a little lasso right around the hair. Don't go in too far. Don't go out too far. Just kind of like this. Don't worry if you're cutting off some of the hair, it doesn't really matter. Go outside and around the bottom, and then come and stay you know, relatively close to the figure. But don't go into the figure very far. I want to just have it just a little ways outside. Again, going outside is okay at the top and the bottom. And then come back to your starting point, and that makes a nice selection. Now we want to refine this selection in tighter. I also want to get a bit better right down in here where it has some of that background showing quite a bit through there. So for that, let's go up here to where it says subtract, right there. And I'll just come in here and do a little thing like that. Just a little kind of a loop in there. That will help us out on refining that area. Okay, now, I have my feathering set at one pixel. That's okay. Click on refine. And it gives us a refined mask. Now this red color in here, this is the preview overlay right there. You can choose a black mat or a white mat. I kind of like that overlay. It's just easy to see. I'll leave all these settings at their default settings except for ramp. I'm going to bring this one down a bit, maybe down to about negative 40 or so, 39, 40, around here somewhere. So it's about one quarter in from the left hand side. And you can change your brush size right down here if you want to. I think this is pretty good. I'm just going to brush in here just out a little bit and then come in a bit further and then let Affinity Photo figure that out. And I'll just work my way 
around the whole figure, just doing it just like this. Most of this, it'll, it'll be fairly straightforward. Just work your way in, and you may have to go over a couple of spots a couple of times to get a nice clean edge. That's fine. And down here, I can now come over this, and I should get a good selection around that as well. Okay, so I'm going to pause the video at this point and then just continue this clear around the whole figure. And I'll go around the top and around the far side. See over here, it's going to be real easy right against the back. That's just going to clean up perfectly. And I'll just work around. Once that's done, I'll bring the video right back up again. Okay, there is the background nice and selected out. Now come down here and make sure that your output is set to selection. That's the one you want, and then click Apply. And there's our selection right there. Now I'll take this selection and apply this down onto this layer here. That's our copy layer. So I'm just going to hide that. Come down to our background layer right here. Let's go ahead and show that one. This is the background copy. And we'll use this selection to make a layer mask. So come down here to the Layer Mask button. is that one right there. Click on that. That then uses the selection to create a layer mask. We can now just deselect, and that's deselect here, or the Control D keyboard shortcut to deselect. We now can bring in our new background layer. So come down here to the background, and then I'll bring that in, File, and I'll use the Place command and have it right there. Again, you can download this picture and this picture from my website. Choose OK, and I'll click over here someplace. There's a picture. Let's just drag this into position. Now it should be just about the exact same size, so I'll make it just a little bit larger here so we don't have anything showing on the edges, just a, just a touch larger. And I think that looks pretty good right there. Okay, so far so good, but I want the background a bit darker than the subjects. We're going to be putting some adjustments onto the background to give us a better blend in here. It's really too bright for this picture. So come down to our background layer right here, and we'll start off with a levels adjustment. So go back to your adjustments. And back to levels, click on the thumbnail right there. And in here I want to darken this thing down, so let's bring our black levels in a bit. And I'll come down quite a ways, maybe down to about 28 or so. That looks pretty good right there. I'll leave the whites where it is. And maybe just a little bit of a tweak on the gamma here. Just a little bit. Maybe about 1.3 or so in here. And then I'll bring the contrast down a little bit by just tweaking the output black a little bit as well. See, it kind of kind of lightens it up just a touch, but it, it brings down some of that contrastiness. So right about there, just a few little tweaks. Now on these settings, you may have to go back and forth a little bit with your different settings to get just the right look, but this is pretty close to start off with. Now it's still far too vibrant and it's a bit too much exposure in here. So take care of the exposure first, and we'll come down here where it says exposure. First, I'll click on the levels name and just get those out of the way. Click on exposure, and here we can darken it down. There we go. Doesn't take much in here. Just kind of slowly push to the left hand side. Looks like about 0.8. Looks pretty good. Just darkening it down a little bit. And it's still too vibrant, too much color. I want to kind of soften that down. It's more color than she has. I need to bring this down to a better look. Let's close that exposure. There we go. So for that, let's go to vibrance right above. Here's our vibrance, and I want to bring down the vibrance and the saturation. Let's bring our vibrance down a little bit, maybe down to say about 0.9 in there. You can see how it's just pulling just a little bit of color out of that. That's all I want, just a little bit. And then do the same thing on the saturation, and we'll pull out a lot more with the saturation, and that's beginning to look better. So it's beginning to now blend in better with her image so that the values look good. I want to have her a bit brighter and the background just a little bit darker and that's looking pretty good. I think it's maybe a bit too unsaturated now. So I'll bring a little bit more vibrance back in again. As you can see here, you may want to, you know, just tweak these a little bit to get just the right effect. So just up a little bit. That looks pretty good right in here, maybe right about here. And I think a little bit darker on that. The nice thing about these adjustments is you can go back up here, bring your adjustments back up and either add a new adjustment onto it or go over here to your layers and you can readjust in here. Let's just hide that one. And you can readjust your existing adjustment right down here. Just double click on the thumbnail. It brings that back up again and you can make an adjustment in here. There we go. 
or with the exposure, just double click on the thumbnail. And again, I can adjust the exposure a little bit right in there. And I think that is looking pretty good right about there. So there you go. That's how to remove the background from a picture and then replace it with a new background. Now, if you like this video, make sure you hit that like button. Don't forget to click on share and subscribe as well. And check out my channel for more videos. And I'll see you next time.